Hello everybody, this is the Great Northern Trend Kill, aka Blake C fourteen fourteen, and I'm here with my good friend Rob or Zara two one three or whatever, or I guess Rob D if you're looking at his YouTube channel. And What's up? I was just saying that's what your YouTube channel is. No, I was just saying what's up. Oh, okay. <laughs> like what's you, up? It, it like, was like whoa. a it was like a what's up. Anyways, it was like a what's up <laughs> kind of question, what's up. Anyways, um, we're doing something. Oh, we're all good. We're all good now. Okay, we're doing something a little bit different today that we haven't actually ever done on this channel, and that's not to do with games. We're going to actually be doing an album review of the album Venom by Bullet from a Valentine. And if you didn't tell by now, because you probably to could tell if you've seen like the references I've done in videos or like my icon and my name and whatnot. I'm I like metal and so does Rob and we both like this band and we both were really excited for this album. So we decided we were gonna review it. And so for this album it got announced oof, what am I gonna say February or March and I was really excited because I had been sort of like I had been looking at all their daily studio updates that they did on Instagram and whatnot, and it was kind of like a lot of hype for the album. So we're just gonna do take a quick second before we get into the track by track review, to sort of talk about our impre or like what we expected from the album. So do you wanna go first, Rob? Um, sure. Um, all right. Okay, listening to the to this album. I noticed the fact that it actually sounded a lot like it was coming from the members of the band themselves, not just songs like what I what I mean by this is like for like, you know, temper temper. Oh god, temper temper. Uh it just felt like they were really just kind of forced to write those tracks. Yeah. In a little bit of a way. And also, you know, stuff like Tears Don't Fall Part Two that Oh man, <laughs> like I'm not I'm not trying to bag on the band, but that era of Bullet for My Valentine was not a good era. Sort Everything of before best. that was cool. Yeah, yeah, it's it's I I'm not looking back at that. I'm glad that this album was different. It seemed like they were trying to go back to some of their roots, but then also try and give it a very thrashy like feel. I noticed that most of this album kind of feels like a thrash album. Except for, the, I mean, there's a lot of harmonies and stuff yeah. like that, but just, if you got, once you listen to it, you'll understand. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I expected when we were getting the teasers and whatnot, and then the singles, and based off No Way Out, if you had asked me what I expected from this album when we heard the single No Way Out, I was going to, I would have told you I would have expected a lot more like the Poison with, you know, the screamy style, because... That song is very scream centric, and as we'll talk about later, that's really the only scream centric song on the album. So if this, if you're looking at this album and thinking you want a really scream centric metalcore album, much in the style of their first album, this album is not for you because I'm telling you right now, screams are not a huge part of this album other than that song. But yeah, uh, he's got a couple. Yes, he's got a and, couple. But, but other than that's the only song. It's where not. It's, it's not dominant. Focus. Yeah, and in the rest of the album, it's much like how they did their first two. Um, they're not their first two, but like everything after um, the poison, like screaming fire and fever. It's much like those albums in where screaming is mostly used in like the pre-chorus and then sometimes in the chorus, but not usually as like, a main singing style, whereas in the poison and on No Way Out, that is the main focus. So if you're looking at that as a, this album and thinking that's a big focus, you're going to be a little disappointed. But, um... Yeah, don't don't go into this album thinking that it's going to be like Waking the Demon. Yeah, that's really <laughs> the only... Don't, it's not. No Way Out's literally the only song like that. So anyways, now that we've kind of gone over, like, what our expectations are, what we were thinking going into this album, we're going to start track by track review. So the first track is called V, or 5, or however you want to say it. And it's basically... Uh, we won't know until they exactly say. <laughs> it's basically... Well, who knows if they'll ever say, because they've been playing it a lot at their performances, and they don't just go, This song's called 5. Oh, great. Um, but anyways, well, not really playing it, but they use it to intro their performances. I've been watching live videos. But anyways, um, the actual track itself, it's the intro to the album, 
um, similar in a way to their intro to their first album, which had Apocalypta. It's the same sort of like dramatic style where they, because this time and that time were the only times that they actually had like an intro to the album instead of just jumping right into the first riff of the first song, like they've done on every album since The Poison and up until now. Whereas this album, and to be honest, I like dramatic intros like this. They, you know, they're like the Harbringer, and like that's why I enjoy songs like Battery by Metallica and other stuff like that, where it's just, you know, dramatic and interesting, and it really gets, and once you know the song, it gets you excited for what's coming next. And this is a little interesting. It's, it's almost it has a creepy element to it. And it's, yes. it has like, it has like a staticky techno thing going into it, and then you hear a couple of lyrics from No Way Out being shouted or screamed by Matt Tuck. Um, but it's way in the background. It's it's quiet. It's yeah. it, it, the main focus is just the ominous dark noises the that you're hearing. Yes, it's very 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 dark. It feels it feels it feels like something's about to go down. Did you think? And then, do you think it did justice as an intro out to the album? I do, I do, because it was very different. I've never heard a really super dark intro by them like this the, this this intro this intro to me kind of set the tone of the album at first it almost reminded me a bit of the intro to Avenged Sevenfold's Waking the Fallen which is actually called Waking the Fallen if you've ever heard that song um, it sort of has that sort of ominous vibe although it does have some guitar as well I'll show you that after this if you haven't heard it but um yeah, it got, got that really nice creepy vibe, and then it. And what's really cool is at the end it just starts to lead into the No Way Out, the first big lyric of the song, because it does that no, 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 and then all of a sudden he just comes through No Way Out as soon as the um, the song No Way Out starts. And we're not going to give V an intro, uh, rating out of 10 because it's not really like an actual song, if we're perfectly honest. It's not really something Right, it's, it, it's something that sounds... Right, it sounds like it's something that they played, like they could easily play it from a computer or something. Yeah, they you don't, know, just they don't for the actually, beginning of time track. Yeah, they're not going to actually play it. There's nothing to play in the song. There's no guitar parts. Unless if you want to... <laughs> well, we could always have, like, three people from the crowd come up with Matt Tuck and just, like, breathe into the microphones for a little bit. <laughs> we have a guy playing, like... Why can't I run <laughs> and escape from myself? <laughs> But yeah, and then. Dun, dun, dun. But overall, a cool intro, definitely atmospheric and ambient. But anyways, let's move on to the first big track of the album, that was also the first single for the album, which was No Way Out. Um, this song, like I said before, is the big metalcore song on the album. It, in fact, it's probably gotten like 50% of the screaming on the album is in this song. <laughs> and um, it, you could tell that this was supposed to be a fan pleaser because this song and a couple others because you could tell this wasn't really something that maybe they were necessarily writing in the style of because the rest of the album didn't really have any of that. I, I, and the reason they probably released it as their first single is probably because it was meant to be a fan pleaser more than anything. Um, but I agree with you on that. <clears throat> I agree. I agree with you heavily on that. And the real question is, is it good? And I would say yes. I'd say it's one of the strong um, tracks, to, in my opinion. Yeah, no way out. No way out is one of. Uh, to me, I personally, I'll just give you my rating on this track right now. Uh, I gave no way out an eight. Like it was a very good yeah. track for an intro track. We gave it. I the, gave the it intro an track. Two. Oh, cool. <laughs> it was a great intro track. This is a good intro that I could see them using, you know, at a show. Which they do. And which is nice. just to get the... Cr oh, nice. I haven't seen any videos, actually. I've just... I've honestly been waiting, because I know they're going to come through. Yeah. And then you're... <laughs> so, pretty much... Yeah, of course. So... Pretty much, it's a good throwdown song to me. It's a song that gets the crowd moving. I can see very much, uh, very fast-paced. 
Yeah, it's pretty hectic, that's true. It's not hectic as in, like, crazy fast riffs, but the drum beat just sets it up for the guitar that's just sort of being... It's pretty hectic. And lots of layered melodies throughout the song. Like, the bass riff, like the dun 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 sort of thing, is playing throughout pretty much the entire song, even during the chorus, by the lead guitar. And then the rhythm guitar coming in, obviously, to back that up during the verses. The solo in the song is short, but it's better than none solos at all, which some of the songs on this album have no solos at all. But the solo on this song is a little bit short, but it is good. It's sort of in an interlude part of the song. And it is pretty decent. Um... Yeah, it's just a really good song. Like I first heard this single, and it immediately got me pumped for the album because it's just a miles better from the, anything we've heard from them, except for maybe Raising Hell, which I did really enjoy. But we will talk about that if we ever do a deluxe track review, which we might do at some point, because we're probably not going to include them in this album review because we haven't heard all of them. But at some point we might do it right. if we can get all of them together, because there's a lot of deluxe tracks for all the different versions. Yeah, there's four there's four different versions and they all come with different deluxe tracks and unfortunately not all of them are released yet. Yeah, but um like we are anticipating a song called Trenches, which no one really knows what it is. It showed up on the setlist for the for the European <laughs> version of the album. Is it a cover? I don't know. Maybe. I just don't know what it is. You think they'd say it's a cover? like there was no st- there was no track time for it. So it's like, did that get thrown on the Wikipedia page by mistake? Like, I don't know. We'll find out. But anyways, back to what we're actually supposed to be talking about. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. No, no, that was my fault too. I went on the tangent about deluxe tracks. Um, so, yeah, I gave this song an 8 as well. No Way Out. I think it's a good song. It's definitely a nice album starter. I think with bu- a band like Bullet, a high energy album starter is vital. And we've kind of seen that on every one of their albums. Even if they've been slower paced, like um, Your Betrayal, it still has energy, right? And it's got that yeah. intro. Yes, it does. And especially with songs like Scream Aim Fire, which are just like thrash fests. Um, thrash fest. If you're wanting to go into thrash fest, then I'm going to talk about Army of Noise. The next track. <laughs> Like, holy crap! But Army of Noise, when that came out, I didn't expect what I was going to hear. Extremely thrash. Like, I mean, this kind of felt to me like a uh, Metallica St. Anger album. <laughs> like, crazy. And then uh, with a mix of Hangar 18 by Megadeth. Yeah, there is like, definitely... Th- there's actually a part that sounds that just like the... Uh, riff. You know, that uh, right after the beginning. Yeah, it's in the um the pre-solo. Or, no, the pre-chorus, sorry, and... Yeah, it's pretty decent riff, um, that they sort of, sort of ripped. It's not really a rip, though, because it's not really doing the same progression. Um, but yeah, the song is high energy. The lyrics... The lyrics... We didn't really talk about lyrics in No Way Out, but we maybe go back to it at the end, because we kind of forgot, and it's too late. But the lyrics for, um, Army of Noise are hit and miss for me because I like the premise it's supposed to be about like the mosh pit it's supposed to be about like the fans they've actually like released statements saying that's what it's about and there's a music video for it out now that you can watch where it's literally just them playing live and like a bunch of pit cam shots but um (laughs) yeah that would oh man like on a DVD especially yeah for sure and um yeah, Army of Noise is definitely a high energy song, much much like um, No Way Out, but it's definitely, let's put it this way, No Way Out is like the poison, and this song is like Scream Aim Fire, like it's like, got that high intensity thrash that ha- was very much present on Scream Aim Fire, on basically every song. It's it's different though in a way that it's almost more old school style, like you could see it being like a Slayer song. If you're gonna change the lyrics, e- yeah, like <laughs> for sure, it's definitely that qu- kind of song, and it's definitely I would consider it thrash metal. And even if you look on Wikipedia, this album is considered thrash metal. That's one of the genres that it's considered, which is interesting because because Bullet from a Valentine's never really been considered thrash metal, 
But then again, I think Scream Aim Fire should definitely be considered thrash metal. If you're gonna consider, like, um, a lot of songs on that album that are just pretty much genuine thrash metal, especially the title track. But anyways, Army of Noise, we can do our ratings now, I guess. I gave Army of Noise an 8 as well. Same. Yeah. I gave it an 8. Another solid song. It's nothing special, like super amazing, that you're just going to listen on repeat over and over. But it's got really thrashiness. And then it's got... Well, well, unless if you are one of those people that really like thrash, then you might. But me personally, it's not one of those songs I throw on repeat. The <laughs> breakdown is pretty good on this song, though. That's what we did. Yeah, imagine. admittedly. The it, breakdown it Cause leads because they don't have breakdowns that much. Yeah, they've never. Really you know what a, I mean? Like this album is an exception, and you'll see with a lot of songs there is breakdowns. This album has probably got the most breakdowns out of any Bullet album, to be honest. When we move into the uh, this album is very different, <laughs> in my opinion. It's they, they 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 were experimenting big time. Yeah, I think with a lot of things with this album. But anyways, um, the solo on this song. It almost gave me a Pantera vibe at some points. Like, it's got almost a dime bag, bag swagger at the midpoint in the solo, where it starts to go into the major territory. And you probably know what I mean, Rob, where it starts to sound a little yeah. bit like dime bag. And um, I wasn't a huge fan of the harmonizing guitar part during the solo, because it's a little different. Rob likes it. I'm not as big of a fan of it, but it's taller, it's not like I just like the ability, mm -hmm, I it? like the ability for two guitarists to be able to actually do that in sync with each other and not fuck it up. I like it, but that's not, it's, it's not like the kind of harmony we're used to from Bullet. Right. Well, as I said just a, just a, a few seconds ago, this album is very different. Yeah. And... Like, if this album, I'm going to say, it feels like they, they, they didn't really go full force with all of the stuff they were thinking, but they definitely, like, touch they like treaded the waters a little bit yeah so next song if we're all good with our oh ones, god we move into some Hold on. of the okay hey guys <laughs> we move into <laughs> some <laughs> of <laughs> we move into some of the weaker territory <laughs> on the album it's called worthless oh. and the first thing you'll notice once you get about halfway through the song to the bridge is it's got a Terminator drum beat, essentially. <laughs> Which is exactly what we're doing. Then. We were, oh, we were, we were both when we were listening to this. We were just sitting around. It, it, unfortunately, I don't want to sound like that we weren't paying attention to the song because we really were. And this song is very forgettable. It's just like it's just. It sounds like a radio song, but it just sounds like one of those that they're just like, we gotta put another song from the album, guys. Pick one. It's not even. <laughs> yeah, they, just they, they this. wrote this in the studio. They released it a statement earlier today about that. They actually wrote this in the studio. So obviously, it's an afterthought. If you're writing it in the studio, it's an afterthought, because usually you do all the writing before you go into the studio. But, um... <laughs> yeah. This reminds me that, like, Padge... It sounds like in this song, Padge was just like, Hey, guys, I came up with this cool riff. We need another song in the album. <laughs> that being said, the lyrics are pretty decent in this song. For a bullet song. Yeah. The lyrics are definitely the strongest okay. point, but the, it's just they could have done so much more with it and it's just an underdeveloped concept that is it's just forgettable you're not going to remember most of the song because it's just it, there's not there's no solo there's no breakdown there's there's really nothing special other than the just formulaic verse chorus verse chorus bridge with not even a breakdown with the terminator drum beat and then outro Er, and then chorus one more time, and then outro. That's literally the song. And it's like 3 minutes and 18 seconds. It's tiny. It's like a pop song in length. So I gave that song a 6 out of 10. Same. I really did. And okay, honestly, I'm not going to lie. We did not copy each other's stuff. Mm -hmm. We did rate gets these different. completely by ourselves. It gets different. It does get different. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, but we sort of I, I, had similar thoughts in the first few tracks. Uh, 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 well, see, I've changed the the rating on this. It, I, it wasn't a five, but then I felt 
I don't know. I felt like it, it honestly was a five, but I didn't want to give it that bad of a rating because it's not that bad of a song. It's just it's unforgettable, just... and that's the reason why I yeah, don't like it. I just gonna... don't remember it at all. This is not a song, and I've that heard it a few times. Ten years down the road, you're not you're gonna remember. Whereas ten years down the road from the poison now, we still remember a ton of those songs, and we listen to them a lot. Whereas with this song, no way. You're not gonna. You're not gonna. Well, this isn't gonna be like in their playlist ten years down the road. No. <laughs> um. Okay. So on to the next oh, song, boy. which is another. Yeah. So, yeah. The biggest gripe that <laughs> we had right off the bat with this song is the terrible. Oh, I'm sorry. Terrible intro. And if you've heard the song, you I'm might so like it. It's not that it's like just awful it's just so cheesy and basically yeah. what it is is it's a choir singing the chorus and the chorus is actually pretty catchy like especially when matt starts to sing it later in the song um it's memorable and it's yeah, catchy when he does it he oh, does it so much better uh... than the choir and it, it'll just it'll you, you sound like it sound it feels like you're listening to like <laughs> Threw me off. The cheesiest metalcore ever because it's like asking Alexander. <laughs> no, it's like pierce the veil. It's like what? No, please um, no. I'm not. I'm not making fun of this band because I do like this band myself and a lot of people do not. But um, it reminded me that like they listened to Crown the Empire hmm. and were like. It's like, Dude, we gotta have that kind of setting, and it was just like, oh no! It's like Please, the teenage, okay. it's like We're the not... fifteen-year-old girl <laughs> metalcore, if you know what I mean. Because there's a whole type of metalcore that's sort of targeted towards that kind of demographic, and it's becoming more popular, which is concerning. Not that it's all that bad, but you know, the bands that have like the singers that sound like women that are actually men. That bugs me. I can't tolerate that, and that's why I can't listen to bands like Pierce the Veil. Oh, I just can't listen to that, you know? It bugs me. It's just so... meh. But anyways, like, as far as the song goes, it's not a terrible song. It's better than Worthless. And, um... The chorus is pretty decent. It's got a pretty decent music video, the song, if you haven't seen the music video. And, but it's, it's clearly... I have not. One of the more commercial songs. Like, it's something that you could see getting a considerable amount of radio play. And I don't know if it has gotten a lot of radio play. But this is probably the one... If any of these songs are, have the potential for a lot of radio play, I'd say this is it. Okay, now... In my opinion, honestly, about the beginning, it doesn't make the song terrible. Mm -hmm. They only do it once. They only do it at the beginning, and that's what I like. It just, uh, like, if they got rid of that chorus, it would be an amazing song to me. It just threw my groove off on the song, and I didn't, like, get it at first. I was just like, oh, no, please. Yeah, the first time I heard uh, it, I, I, it felt too foreign. And it was the second and... single after No Way Out, and just hearing that after No Way Out was just like, it, it dropped my expectations a bit for the album. Because I'm like, if there's going to be more of this, then as opposed to more of No Way Out style, I'm probably not going to like the album as much. Thankfully, this song. One song does not an album make, and the song isn't that bad, and honestly, you can live through it. I mean, these two songs, Worthless and You Want a Battle, are the two weak songs in this album. So if you just, if you're gonna just skip through these two songs, if you make a playlist, just leave these two songs out, and the rest of the album, you're gonna like a lot better, I think. <laughs> just being perfectly honest. And then, we jump straight from that song to one of the better songs on the album. Broken. Um, Broken is just a really good song overall. It's got an, an intro that is... This one has a scream in it. Yeah, it has some good screaming. This one has a couple screams. This um, one, I actually made a note about that, actually. It starts with that really nice intro that almost is a little reminiscent of um, your betrayal, but way sped up with like some guitar over it. And then it goes into a thrashy riff that is pretty memorable, to be honest. <coughs> with a with the verse is That's... interesting. 
The verse. Is... I don't mean to say this a lot. I don't mean to say this a lot, but one, yeah, the ver Once they get into the verse, it's very like this is going to make the crowd move a lot. This yeah. this is another one that's going that the, hopefully they're going to be moshing about the entire song almost. Mm -hmm. And the the verse mellows down a little bit. Like it's there's some more clean guitars, but it's in, with some melodic guitar going over it. But then it gets way up for the chorus, with the instantly memorable chorus. Um, oh, chorus. man. Um, <clears throat> this song, actually, I really like the pre-solo before the solo. Mm -hmm. It really it reminded me uh, that I was listening to a, uh, like, the, that I was playing an like uh, old-school Castlevania dun, 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 game. Yes. That's a pretty good riff. It rem it's basically it, a solo. It made me feel like I was playing Castlevania. <laughs> the pre-solo is a solo well, yeah. on its own. And then you get into the solo, which is probably one of the better ones on this album. But there is some good ones coming up in the later half of the album. But this is definitely... It's crazy this is already track six, and you don't really feel like you're in the back half of the album yet. But you are. <laughs> but anyways, um... <laughs> yeah, Broken is good. Broken is is old school bullet. I would say it's probably stylistically most similar to Screaming Fire with big influences of the fever. Those two albums sort of combined is what Broken is sort of got a feel of. And I gave it a nine, to be honest. This is one of my favorites on the album for sure. This one yeah. <laughs> I hate I hate to say it. no actually I gave this one an eight. Yeah. Which is fair enough too. Like it's it's a it's a good song. It's just overall like a song that if you're a fan of the old school bullet and the newer fever style, you're just gonna like this song. It's a good song. It's aggressive. It's got the melody. It's got the solos. It's got everything that you really need from a bullet song. And then we transition into one of the curveballs off this album, the biggest curveball actually. Venom. Venom. Venom is an interesting beast. So, it starts off with a drum beat that's pretty generic. And I don't think I ever mentioned this to you, Rob, but if you've ever heard the song The Final Masquerade by Linkin Park, you'll notice it starts off with an extremely similar drum beat. It's actually slightly faster, and I knew I was making that comparison ever since I started hearing this song. And then I listened to it the other day and realized that was a song I was thinking of. But anyways, um, then it goes into the weird, clean guitar intro with some interesting effects added. Almost has a Cries in Vain intro vibe, but if you think this is going to be like Cries in Vain where it gets heavy, I'm going to have to warn you that's not the case. This song is the ballad of the album. <laughs> um, this this one reminded me of Suffocating Under Words of Sorrow. Like, just the beginning with the, the same note structure in a way. Mm -hmm. Except, obviously, more um, melodic and more of a ballad style. Yes. As opposed to Suffocating Under Words of Stor Sorrow, which is a little heavier. Um, <clears throat> in the verses, they have a lot of um, echo. I was really yeah, taking a close listen to, to this track. Well, I noticed that uh, it doesn't actually sound like Padge is playing that much. It's just there's a lot of echo, and it's make like echo with delay or something like that, and it's making like a bouncing effect that makes it sound like he's playing more than what he is. Mm -hmm. The verse is really good in this song. I really enjoyed the verse. It's very um. This song is definitely an experiment for them. They were trying something new, considering the fact that. Usually, the title track on these guys' albums are they're sort of like supposed to be like the epitome of the album, like the album that or the song that sort of describes all of the album. Because when you look at Scream Aim Fire, that was sort of like the thrashiness that the album carried throughout. Fever sort of was the more toned down, and then Temper Temper's title track was extremely experimental and radio -y and you know what I mean. Whereas this song doesn't really have anything to do with the rest of the album, considering the fact it is a ballad. And I was wondering if there was going to be a ballad on this album, because traditionally I've quite enjoyed ballads from this band. 
such as Say Goodnight, which is me and Rob's personal favorite ballads. Um, yes, that's a very pretty song, but we'll get on to that one some other time for you guys. Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> We might um, go over like a top ten bullet songs that, that we something. really that's like. That's an idea. If you guys want that, put it in the comments and we'll do that sometime. But anyways... Um, um, also, quite um, just to talk to you people watching this... Um, if you guys want to, leave a couple comments down below about like what you guys thought about some of the songs, too. We'll gladly read what you guys thought about it, if you guys agreed with us on some of it, if you guys had other points that you would like to point out about it, if it reminded you guys of other songs. Yeah. Feel free. Alright, now back to the review. Um, I guess we might have to finish up with Venom with our rating. I gave it an 8. You gave it a 7, didn't you? I gave it a 7, but that was also the first time that I listened to it. Um, I've listened to it a few times. This is actually one of the songs that I've listened to more off the album. I'm going to give this one... It's a little bit in the middle there, but I'm going to give it an 8.5. It's I a good really song. like this song. It's growing on me because it's, it's very different. And it that's shows me... What, it shows, it's, and, and that's what... Like, the, it's showing me more stuff they can do. Yeah, it's Sorry. it's it's a curveball. It's an it's, it's an experiment for them. It's not something we've really heard before. Because even though it is in the ballady style, you it's not really comparable to any bullet song. It's not really a Tears Don't Fall style. It's not really a Sagan Night style. It's different than all anything they've really done before. For um, there is probably some similarities with the intro between Dead to the World, which is the ballad off Temper Temper, but that's really where it stops. And it's definitely an interesting song, and that's one thing I definitely noticed about the later half of this album. A lot of growers. A lot of songs that yes, I initially yes. thought were sort of meh, and then they really growed on grew the growed. That's grammar for you. Grew on me. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, and this Say, is one okay. of those. Like the next four songs, which are the last songs, all sort of. I've raised the rating on almost every one of them since I've listened to them. Really? Yeah, because I just like I can listen to the last four song these songs, and I'll probably put them all in my playlist because they're really good. So let's move into that. Harder the heart, the harder it breaks. Um, this song is good def- song. It's a good song. It's definitely um, it's it's a little upbeat. And uh, is this a song that reminded you of Hearts Burst Into Fire a little bit? No, 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 no. I that said was... this one reminded me a little bit of Waking the Demon just because of how progressive this is. It's not as fast, but yeah. to me it just reminded me of that kind of feeling. It, it, it's, I mean, I know, I know that I said earlier, do not expect it to be like this album to be like Waking the Demon, but I mean, yeah. it's truly not. The, the, I will not, I will not say that the song is like Waking the Demon, but it just gives me that feel. It mm-hmm. gives me that feel of them going back to that kind of root, mm-hmm. and I like it. And this song sets a trend that the next three songs on the album sort of follow, the grooviness to it. This is a groovy song, yes. and you'll definitely see that. The tapping in the next intro. Three. Yeah, the intro will How probably. How many albums? <laughs> How many albums have they had now where they have a song like track seven or eight <laughs> where it's, it's like tapping. you know like Alone was yeah. Yeah, this song will probably remind you most of with the intro of Alone or Forwards to Choke Upon with the tapping intro. I don't think it's tapping on Forwards to Choke Upon, but it's a similar style of intro. You know what I mean? Um. Mm-hmm. So, the chorus is really good. It's upbeat. It's definitely more of a, like, a triumphant song. Whereas the rest of the song is sort of yes. like downy and harsh. This this is the upbeat. The chorus is more triumphant. But it's good. It's totally something I could see myself singing. Like, belting out at a concert. And I really hope they play one of these next couple songs at their concert. Because they're they're just got that memorableness to it, if you know what I mean. Like I can see this being a huge crowd favorite. Like it's a it's oh, got yeah. a, the chorus you can call back, like you know, have to sing a part and then have the crowd sing the next part. You can do that all over the place on this song on this chorus. I can definitely see this being a live favorite. Whether they will play it live, who knows? Because um, we really don't know which of these songs are going to make it into the set list permanently. I'm assuming No Way Out will, but aside from that, we don't really know. 
But anyways, um, yeah, Harder the Heart, a very good song. I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. I gave it a 9. <clears throat> it's a good this song. This song, to me, man, you hear that? My throat just, and I even got water to prepare for this, too. That's great. Uh, <laughs> I gave it a 9, though, because, man, once you get right past the intro, this song throws down pretty hard. Like, this song... This song, I want them to play this one live. I truly do. Like, this one they oh, need yeah. to. I don't think there's a solo like they, they... in this song, and that's probably the only drawback. Is there a solo in this song? I truly don't remember. We that's may need to actually pause real quick and actually give it a quick listen. Sure, let's do that. This Just... is the one song that's a little <clears throat> fuzzy on, except for the chorus. So we're going to pause the recording right here, and we're just going to... Listen to the song, so we'll see in like five right. seconds. For you guys. Um, 